we're gonna wait a few more minutes just for more people to join. We have about 46 people registered. For those of you who joined recently, if you can please put in your first and last name in the chat and the organization that you're with. When, Gil, when I'm in present mode, I can't really see the chat. So if anybody can't hear or need something, can you let me know? Um, so everybody who just recently joined, if you can help us, please put in your first name and last name in the chat box, as, as, um, as well as the organization that you're with. Uh, my name is Diana Macarres. I am going to be serving as the president of Elgin Hispanic Network for a second year. Um, some of you might remember me from last year. And um, this meeting is one that EHN hosts, but we also have a really awesome presentation by Linda Brubaker from ECC. So um, first we're going to just share a little bit about the Elgin Hispanic Network. Um, I'm going to introduce our board of directors for this year. We're going to share some of the benefits of joining the Elgin Hispanic Network if you are not a member, but maybe you're here as a guest. And we are also going to have a survey that we do annually to get some feedback from everyone about things you would like to see more of or less of in EHN and just some feedback about how we are doing. So um, for those of you who are just joining, I have been reminding people to put in their first name and last name in the chat box, as well as the organization that you're representing. And I'm really excited for our um, 2021 Board of Directors. As I mentioned, I, my name is Diana Macabez. I work for the Grand Victoria Foundation. And I am serving a second year as president for EHN. Um, also on our board is Paola Velasquez with Advocate Sherman Hospital. She is the president-elect. And we are really excited to have Gil Feliciano with the Coalition for a Safe and Healthy Elgin this year, who is our um, secretary as well as tech um, guru here. <laughs> uh, Betty Mattis from Farmers Insurance continues on as our treasurer. Diana Ortega Eret from Zion Lutheran Church is our awards and scholarship co chair. We do have two open uh, board positions. One of them is the finance chair, and one of them is the marketing chair. Uh, if any of you are interested in learning more about those positions, please reach out to uh, myself or you can email our. Um, send an email to our email address, info at elginhispanicnetwork.org. Our, our fundraising chair is Elisa Lara with BNA Healthcare. Our membership chair is Janet Mihalik. And our social cultural co-chairs this year are the fabulous David M. and Linda Ramirez. Um, and Maggie Cifuentes with Bros Belts was our uh, past president. I also wanted to just give you guys a brief overview of who to reach out to with different kinds of questions. Um, you can always email our, uh, send an email to our main email address, which is info at elegantispanicnetwork.org for all your EHN concerns. And we will forward that email to the appropriate board member. Paola will be helping 
coordinate the host organizations and the meetings and their presentations. So if you're a host agency for this year and you have questions about that, Paola would be your contact. If you want to host for next year, you can also um, reach out to Paola and let her know that you are interested in hosting. Um, Gil is helping us out with the website and, until we find a marketing person. So he can also answer questions related to the website as well as Wild Apricot. He will share more about Wild Apricot um, a little bit later. Um, and Gil is also um, someone that you can reach out to if there's something regarding our announcements for the meetings. Um, Betty would be your contact for anything regarding finance. You can also reach out to me for that. Um, Diana Ortega Eret could be your, she is your contact for awards and scholarships. If you want to participate in the scholarship committee or you just have questions about how the scholarship program works, she is your contact for that. Um, Elisa, you can go to her with ideas for fundraising. If you want to partner with us to do a fundraising event, if you want to donate to EHN, Elisa um, is your contact. Janet, um, since she's a membership coacher, she is your contact for your membership um, issues. If you need an invoice, if you need to renew your membership, if you need to edit the people that are on your bundle in Wild Apricot, she would be who you reach out to. And with David and Linda, you can um, reach out to them if you have ideas for um, our event. Like for example, last year we did the EHN's Got Talent um, or other events that maybe you would like to partner with EHN for. Um, so up next is just a listing of our different host organizations. We are really appreciative of all the organizations who responded to the call that we put out to find organizations for this year. So we have um, a pretty diverse uh, group of organizations who will be presenting this year. Uh, because we will be doing meetings virtually, we did uh, mention to the organizations they could decide to give a donation to our scholarship fund since they don't have to purchase lunch for 70 people like we did before the pandemic arrived. That's um, an option that they can choose to do. But we did want to say thank you to Surf Pro and Zion Lutheran Church who were hosts last year and they um, gave us a donation for our scholarship fund. So thank you so much for that um, and for all your support. All right, so on to our, some of our member benefits. We obviously have the general meetings which happen monthly and as a member of EHN, you can join those meetings for free. We um, also have a Facebook group, which is pretty active and you can, if you're a member, you can share your announcements there. Um, people who are not members of EHN can still join, but they are not allowed to post. And also if you invite people to join the group, just mention to them that they have to answer the three very simple questions we have prior to joining the group. We don't accept people who don't answer the questions. Um, so that's just um, something to know in case you're inviting people to join the group and they haven't been accepted. Um, we have the Wild Apric Apricot platform, which Gil will be sharing about um, a little later. And this year, because we know there's not a lot of spots for organizations who want to host to um, do the hosting, we are going to be offering a video highlight as a, an additional benefit um, to some of the member agencies. And we will share more information about how, how many spots are available and how to sign up for that. Um, very soon, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, as you know, we do have our scholarship program. We give uh, scholarships to high school students, and we also have started um, since last year a non traditional student scholarship. I wanted to invite Diana to just tell us a little bit about the scholarship program, like the deadline, and um, if people can sign up to be on the committee. Yeah. Welcome everyone. Uh, our, the scholarship program um, at EHN is uh, very strong. We have some really strong candidates who apply every year and it's a lot of fun working with this group. I am at this time recruiting anybody who wants to join in in, in this uh, fun work with me, let me know. There are some people who are gonna continue doing this work with EHN to help do this important work and I'm 
always looking for new faces. Um, it does require um, at least one extra meeting each month in the months of February, March, and April um, for the high school portion, and then extra meetings in July, August, September, and October for the non-traditional student scholarships. Um, so that's one extra meeting um, per month on those months. If you're interested, let me know. Um, and you can just type, send me a private message in the chat. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing, the, the application for um, the uh, high school scholarship program um, will be posted on our website by February 15th. And the deadline for that this year will be, I believe, the first week of April. Thank you, Diana. Yes. Okay. Don't you have some housekeeping items? Uh, we invite you to continue to RSVP to the meetings via the email that we send out announcing the meetings. That's the only way that you can get the Zoom link to join the meetings. Um, we also invite you to continue inviting guests. As I meant, I don't know if I mentioned, but guests can join the meeting once for free, and then we encourage them to become a member of VHN. Um, the membership is $80 for the whole year for individuals and for organizations, and those funds go directly to our scholarship program. For announcements, please continue engaging in the Facebook group, and there will be time during the general meetings to also share announcements. Although they won't be a huge part of the meeting, maybe like um, 10 minutes each month uh, will be allocated to do announcements. We are hoping to do networking activities on, on Zoom using the breakout rooms. So that's something that uh, we will be trying out next month. And um, Kyo, this is the spot where you can share about a wild applicant. So let me start sharing my screen. Not a problem. Let me go here. And I trust everybody can see that. Um, while Apricot, for those of you that don't know, is our, um, our foundational uh, kind of a membership, financial database. It's kind of a, um, a, a lot of things that'll help us make things a little bit uh, more streamlined and, and easier for all our volunteers because everybody on here is, is a volunteer. Um, and it's a, a third party uh, piece of software uh, but uh, there's a couple of ways to, to, to really take advantage of, of your membership. And I don't know how many actually do. I don't think a whole lot do. And maybe it's because you simply don't know. Uh, so I'm gonna, here to show you a little bit about it. Uh, the first way to access it is through your browser. It's your phone and your browser, but let's go with the browser first. And if you haven't already, uh, all you have to do is type in elderspanningnetwork.org and you'll come across uh, this page. And over here on the top right, is where you log in. And uh, here's, I think, where automatically a lot of people don't or forget to do uh, to sign in. Uh, so you put in your email and your password. If you don't remember your password, that's fine. There's a forget the password link there and, and, and one will be mailed to you. Uh, so uh, don't, don't worry about that. If you don't know, we'll get that into you. Uh, so be sure to log in first because uh, this is the public page. And unless you remember, you won't get the, the benefits. Uh, you'll notice once you do log in, you'll see your name, and then you'll see view profile, change password, and log out underneath it. But you also have access to the directory. Now, this member only, if you'll notice back here, it's not there until you log in. Once you log in, then it shows up. That's how you know you've logged in. So uh, let's take a look at the, the profile. If you click on profile, here are all the things you can access. Uh, your actual profile, you can edit it. There's uh, privacy issues. Uh, once you click on that, you can uh, decide what you want other members to see uh, in terms of your, your information. Hopefully a lot, because don't forget folks, this is a networking group. Uh, this isn't a uh, you know, dating site or anything. So we really want to share as much information as we can about each other so to maximize our, our networking opportunities. Uh, but uh, if you want to know what emails you're subscribed to, uh, there's a list there. Uh, event registrations, uh, if you want to get a list of all the e events you've registered to, uh, if you want a copy of your invoice to print, to download, uh, as well as any payments you may have made, that's there as well, uh, and any donations have been listed as well. So it's got a wealth of information there that a lot of folks uh, I don't think even know are there, but there they are. So if you're looking for an invoice, you don't necessarily have to email us for it, <laughs> uh, you have access to it. 
The next thing is the directory. Uh, the directory is really nice to have uh, because as, if you, as you click on it, you'll see everybody's name and you can search just a basic search name, whatever. Uh, but there's also advanced search so you can search more specific fields. Uh, that's why your, your entry and your directory is really important uh, to, for you to put in as much as you possibly can, including a photograph. Again, uh, a lot of people don't feel comfortable uh, under normal circumstances, which I understand, uh, but let's not ever forget this is still networking and to be able to see what someone looks like. And if you're gonna meet for coffee for the first time, it just kind of helps to know uh, what, what the person looks like, et cetera. So uh, you don't have to, but I think the more information you have in your directory, uh, the, the better it is for, for our, your purposes in terms of uh, networking. Uh, so once you click on a member, and here I just happened to pick Linda, uh, who's one of my favorite people, and uh, you'll see here uh, her level, her first name, last name, email, her title, organization, her website. Uh, she included a picture. So this is the kind of thing that you'll have. Uh, it also has on the top how many members are linked to, to Linda. As you all know, uh, as a member, you're entitled up to three voting members. And that's where you'll see up there one member linked, two members linked, or three members linked, if you want to know who's all linked to your, your account. Uh, if you want to use your phone, uh, here's the, <laughs> it's available both in iOS and Android. Uh, I've had uh, pretty decent success, but I know some people haven't. Uh, and so if you have problems with it, don't blame yourself. Maybe just go ahead and blame the software. Uh, but there are two wild apricots uh, and there's one for admins and one for members. Of course, you want to download the one for members. And once you do and log in, uh, this is this is the page that meets you, right? It's basically your profile, the very first one. It doesn't have everything that the uh, browser version has, but it certainly has uh, most of what you probably need if you're if you're being mobile. Uh, so uh, there you have all your information on yourself. If you click on that little hamburger on the top left under uh, my profile, you get this expanded menu uh, where you can access uh, the members, you can access your events you can access your tickets or you can log out. So it's a little bit more simplified and mainstream on the, um, uh, on the phone uh, app. So if you click on members, again, here's a whole list of members. Uh, same thing, you click on Nancy, you'll get her information or email uh, so you can contact her. You'll see that on this sheet, Elizabeth and Kyle have their photos. So we kind of have an idea of what they look like, which is, which is really great. Now, if you click on events, you'll see basically the next event that is coming up. It doesn't show you all the events in the past, whatever. Uh, this is a, the phone, so it assumes you just kind of want to know what's the latest. So this is the latest. You click on that event, this is what you come up with. You can add it to your calendar. Uh, you, it tells you it's a virtual meeting. Uh, that's, a, I believe, a link to the virtual. And, uh, and there's a QR code. Uh, if we ever in, institute uh, a QR code check-in where you come in with the, with the phone, you can show us your QR code, we can scan it and, and check you in. Uh, we haven't done that yet, but that's also a possibility. Now that's under overview. You see there's also a tab up there called info and that just gives you a little bit more information about the meeting. Any questions? I know it was kind of quick, uh, but it wasn't terribly um, complicated. It's just, I think a lot of people get hung up on um, once they log in, what can they do? Uh, any, any questions from anybody? All right. Uh, Gil, did you talk about the app also? I might that is that. the app. Oh, my fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you so much, Gil. I, you got it. Um, it's, really, it's just a really good benefit that we have for members, so please make sure that you're using it. Um, up next, I we want to have you guys take a couple of minutes. No. To, okay. Okay. Thank to, you. Um, answer our survey. So I'm gonna put the link in the chat. It's a very short survey. Um, just getting some feedback from all of you. Does anyone have any questions about other um, EHN related um, topics? Can everyone access the link that I put in the chat? So we'll take, um, I think we can do maybe like three minutes
to go and, and do the survey. And um, if you can help us fill out the survey right now, that would be the best. But I know sometimes people don't have a chance to go into the survey. So we will also be sending a, um, an e newsletter with the link so you can do that. The survey will be open until February 26, I believe. And then in March, we hope to be able to share the results of the survey with you guys. Um, I wanted to announce um, the winners of our EHN Got Talent from last year. Thank you so much if you joined. Um, I think it was a, a really fun event. We got to see some very cool talent from some of our board members. And um, the winner in first place uh, was Linda Ramirez. Congratulations, Linda. Yay. <laughs> we do have uh, uh, second place was Gabriel M. So David's son and third place was David. So thank you so much everyone for um, casting your vote and for the board members who participated and as well as the community talent um, that we had. We haven't decided if we will do something like that for this year, but um, we are still in the process of planning that out. All right. So up next, I wanted to invite Linda Baker from Elgin Community College. She is the Employment Transitions Coordinator, and she will be sharing about um, how she works with individuals and groups to update their resume. Thank you, Linda, for being here. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to try and do this. Um, let me see if I can make this technology work. Ah, can you make me the co-host so that I can share my screen? Please? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> oh, Gil, you're muted. Trying to get to it. Not sure okay. I know how to do Thank that. Give me a second. Um, I wonder if you can just make it so people, multiple people can share. Oh, I did that. Can you try again, Linda? I absolutely will. Yes, can you all see my screen? Yes. Wonderful, okay. So what I do over at Elgin Community College is that my job is specifically to work with members of the community. I don't work with students. So I work with all of you and I work with anybody who is unemployed or underemployed and looking to get back into the workplace or to better themselves in the workplace. And so I do a variety of things. So I'm gonna do a little pitch first and I will probably do the pitch at the end. But what I do is everything from providing networking groups and uh, little sort of informal kind of educational programs, which we do every Monday. We call it Lunch and Learn. There are some job search accountability groups every Thursday. And we also do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you're looking for assistance in your job search, deciding what to do, where to look, want help with your resume or interview prep or um, cover letters, any of that, that's where I come into play. In fact, last year, I worked with over 480 people, 128 of whom got jobs last year. And we've already had 18 people this year who've gotten job offers. So the idea, and we're excited about the fact that we're able to provide this service to the community. And I'm hoping that if any of you are in that job search realm, I know you're all employed now, but if anybody wants to come out and uh, get some assistance with a job search as you move forward, I'm happy to help. And I'll put my name and contact information in the chat when we're done. So what I wanna do right now is talk about crafting your resume. And if you have questions, by the way, please ask them. I may not see them in the chat, but if you write them down, we'll get to them at the end or somebody perhaps can read it to me and I will do it then. Okay, so let me see if I can make this work. All right, so most of you already have a resume of some sort. And I'll tell you that if you haven't put a resume together in the last couple of years, a lot of things have changed. My guess is that your current resume looks something like this. It's just a straight chronological resume where you're talking about um, what you've done, where you worked, and you list all of your job responsibilities. And then what you probably do is you send that same resume out to everybody when you're applying. Well, we're still gonna do a portion of a chronological resume, but I will tell you that 
now the days, the best way to get your resume seen is actually to tailor it, to customize it every time you send it out. So the, I'm going back a minute, all right. So this is a standard resume where you're talking about just your experience and then your education. Some people, if they're trying to make a switch, they'll do what's called a functional resume. So the work history comes later, but they try and group information depending upon the type of skills that they have. So you hear, see people talk about customer service experience and skills or problem solving skills or administrative skills or managerial skills. I'm not as comfortable with this kind of a resume. And I'll tell you why, because it, it groups things in a way that isn't always as easy for a new employer to read. And the goal of your resume is to get your foot in the door to get somebody to ask you questions. By the way, I'm going through this very quickly. Here's what's more common and a better way of doing it. And this is really where we're gonna focus. It's what's called a skills and accomplishment based resume. With a skills and accomplishment based resume, what you're doing is you're highlighting what the employer is looking for and you're showing them directly what it is you can do. Because here's the sad truth. Pre-pandemic, employers were getting anywhere from on average 50 to maybe 250 resumes per job opening. Now we're finding that it's closer to 100 and up to 2,000 resumes per job. So what that means is that if you're sending out a resume, you wanna make sure that you're one of the people who gets filtered into the process so that somebody will talk to you. And the more you're tailoring your resume so that it matches what it is they're looking for, the better off you are. Because with all those resumes to take a look at, I honestly don't have time to read in detail each and every resume. So you have anywhere from two to eight seconds to capture my attention. That means that the important information related to the job you're looking at has to be right up at the top of the resume because I'm going to scan that first quarter of a page first. And if I don't see what I'm looking for there, I may put you on the bottom of my pile. And if I don't find anyone else, I may come back to you. But your goal with your resume is to get your foot in the door and make sure that you're getting as much information up front to that recruiter, that hiring manager, to say what you're looking for is exactly what I can do. So I said before that there's some myths about resumes and that's that once your resume is done, it's done. And I will admit that I am old enough that I remember the days when we used to put together a resume, we'd type it up, we would put it in an envelope or we would walk it into an employer and it was the same resume every time. If you're doing that over and over these days, you're not gonna have quite as much success because the best practice is that you're going to be customizing your resume every single time you send it out. Now I know that's hard work. And I know that that probably means that you won't be sending out quite as many resumes. But in my view, that's a great thing because if you're sending out lots of resumes and they're all exactly the same, it's almost like throwing spaghetti against a wall to see what sticks. You're taking a deliberate step by customizing your resume for every application, showing exactly why you fit, more importantly, not only why this is a good fit for you, but why you're a good fit for that job. So that said, here's the kind of way that we're gonna be putting that resume together. Many of you, if you've got resumes now, probably have your full address on your resume. We don't do that anymore. No one is going to send you any information asking you to come into a for an, uh, an interview and send it to you snail mail in the hard copy mail. You're going to get those calls on your phone or you're going to get a text or you're going to get an email. So when we're talking about your contact information on your resume, the things that are important, obviously your name, your phone number, don't label it. I don't need to know that it's a phone number. You don't need to tell me whether it's your home phone if you still have one or your mobile phone, just put in your phone number, your email address. And again, don't label it, but make sure your email address is there and make it a clickable link 
so that if I'm looking at your resume and I want to get a hold of you, it's very easy for me to click on that email address and get in touch with you. And your LinkedIn URL. So for those of you who are on LinkedIn, we want to make sure that your URL is there as well. And if you don't know what a link, if you're not on LinkedIn, you want to hear more about it, I'm happy to work with you to try and get that set up. You notice the one thing that isn't here I mentioned was your street address. We don't put that there. We don't always even have to put in what city in which you live. So sometimes the city you live is an advantage in the sense that you're really close to where the job is. In that case, you're going to list your city or you might. But let's say that you're willing to travel further. So I live about 45 minutes to an hour away from ECC. If I had put in my address, my city, in my resume for ECC, they might have looked at it and said, oh, she won't come, it's too far away, she won't stay. My address is going to be on the application. So if they really want to know, they will know where I live. But in terms of the resume, you want to make sure that you get to decide how far you want to travel and they're not gonna use that city in which you live and say, oh, you're too far away or even better, hey, she's really close or he's really close. I know that they can get here. That's an advantage. They know the neighborhood. The next thing that comes up on your resume, oops, sorry about that, is a professional summary. And a professional summary is optional. I am not saying that you should put in a, an objective. An objective makes you look older. And an objective also says, this is what I'm looking for. And employers are saying, I want to know what you can do for me. So a professional summary is really a quick two or three lines, who you are in relationship to the job you're applying for. So if you wanna think about it as your header for that resume, that's really what it is. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert a section that says skills. The skills are where you really start customizing your resume for the job you're looking at. And it's your first chance to say, here's what you're looking for hiring manager. Here's exactly what I can do for you. And even though we're gonna call them skills, we're really talking about keywords. The keywords that will help me differentiate, that will help me narrow my field of hundreds of resumes down to the 20 to 30 that I actually want to do a phone screen with that I really wanna take a better look at. So when we're talking about skills, we're gonna talk about those things that are transferable and you all have wonderful skills. You all have great transferable skills. Our job is to put them in terms that the new employer can see so that they say right up front, this is what I need, this is what you can do. By putting them up front, we do several things. We're highlighting not only how you fit, but those skills can come from anywhere in your work history or even from a class you've recently taken. We're taking keywords from the job description, using their words if we can, and putting them right up front so it's hard for somebody else to miss. And this is the kind of format that we would do. We're actually going to be tabbing those skills across the page so that these skills will look as though they're in columns or in a table, but we're not gonna put them in a table. We're not gonna put them in columns. And the reason for that is that you have to format your resume, not just for the human eye, the dummy on my side of the desk, but you also have to be able to format it for the applicant tracking systems, which will either be used as an electronic filing cabinet or also as a way of trying to sort through some of those resumes to tell the hiring manager or the recruiter which candidates they should take a look at first. So even though we're calling these skills on your resume, think about them in effect as keywords. So if you have experience in a specific industry or working with a specific population, that may not necessarily be a skill, but if that's what the employer is looking for, putting that up front in that skills section helps make you stand out. And that's the entire point. 
because that's what's going to tell somebody else that they want to look further. Those skills are normally one to three words. Again, they're pulled directly from the job description if we can. You want anywhere from six to 12, maybe 15 of those skills or keywords up top. That's your first way of saying, here's what you're looking for, here's what I can do. By the way, I know I'm going through this quickly. Sometimes we're going to be able to add another section that's talking about selected accomplishments, highlights of your experience or your history, where we're talking about something that you've done that directly relates to the job you're looking at. Again, by pulling it up top, we're going to make it clearer for the new employer that what you did for somebody else you can do for them. Now, I saw that there was one, at least one person who was in the, the meeting today who's a realtor. And I'm gonna use an example from your industry for a moment, if I might. When you're selling a house or buying a new place, one of the first things that you're told as a seller is that you need to remove the clutter and you need to depersonalize. The new owner, the new prospective owner has to be able to see themselves in your space rather than see you. They have to see how you fit, how they fit into that space. With your resume, we're trying to accomplish exactly the same thing. By pulling things out from past jobs, we're not tying it to that job or that industry. We're trying to demonstrate that what you've done is transferable to a new company. So that's why we're pulling some of this information up here, up top, so that it makes it easier for the new employer, the dummy on my side of the desk, to be able to see that what you did for someone else, you can do for me. These accomplishments, these highlights, we're probably going to include anywhere from two to six, maybe eight of those. And this is all before we even talk about where you work. So those first sections right up at the top, the, that first quarter of a page, that first third of a page is all the things that makes you transferable and makes it easy for a new employer to say you're a fit for the new job. Now we start talking about your experience where you talk about where you worked and what you did. But even in this experience section, we're still going to customize that if we can to the new job. Employers are no longer, unfortunately, interested in everything you can do. They're interested in what you can do for them. So many times when we're looking for a new job, we want to include everything we've done and all the highlights of everything that we've done, whether it's related to the new job or not, because our feeling is, well, I can do this and I can do this too. And that's so much more. So I'm much more valuable to you. Not only that, we're justifiably proud of everything we've ever done. But if I'm looking at it from the dummy on my side of the desk, the new employer, the new recruiter, the new hiring manager, unfortunately, especially because there are so many people looking, they're interested in what you can do for me, not everything you've ever done. So when you add, when you say, I can do this because this is what you're looking for. And in addition, I can do this too. Their first response is going to be, yeah, but I don't need that. So if you're adding that, all those extras, some of that is, well, the job is going to be too limited for them. They won't be interested. They won't stay. Or all those extras, I can do that and oh, too expensive. I can do that and, yeah, but they're not going to be satisfied doing what I really want them to do. So we really want them to concentrate on what you can do for them. And that does mean, unfortunately, that there are going to be some things we're not going to talk about in your resumes even though you've done it very, very well. Remember when we were talking about the chronological resume right up at the beginning? You're still going to be doing that in this section. You're listing your most current job first, and then you go to the last one. But you only have to put 10 to 15 years worth of experience on your resume. Education and training, we're going to do the same thing. Most current first. 
if you have a degree of any kind, that always goes first. If you have additional training of any kind, even if you're still enrolled in it, that comes next. But it is training that is related to the job you're looking at. Okay. And I know I threw a lot of stuff at you in a very short period of time. Thank you, Linda. So are there any questions? I did see one up here. Do I help people uh, obtain apprenticeships? What I can do is I don't directly do the apprenticeships. I work with um, people who are looking for jobs who are in the community, whether it's a full-time job, a part-time job, a survival job, a career change. But if you're looking for an internship or an apprenticeship, I will be happy to put you in touch with the right people. Okay. Linda, this is Sally from Centro de Información. Yes. Question, are your services also for Spanish speaking um, individuals? And I guess especially for those uh, also like immigrants who have earned credit outside of the US? So again, I don't specifically work with students. I work with members of the community. Um, when you're talking about that, Sally, do you mean are people who earn credit outside the US uh, in terms of taking new classes in the US or in terms of how they apply those classes uh, for a job here? Mostly, I guess, for Spanish speaking individuals, you know, that Spanish is their main first language and that have earned some kind of credits or credentials outside the US and they come here looking for a job. So, you know, uh, do you assist in that as well? Um, yes, but with one proviso, I don't speak Spanish. Okay. <laughs> so when we were on campus on occasion, um, I might ask somebody else in the building to come in and help translate for me okay. if that was necessary. But I'm happy to work with anyone uh, in the community, regardless of who what their first language is, what kind of job they're looking for, um, anything else. And there is no charge for any of the services that I provide. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my name and my email address in the chat. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. Uh, we have some time for announcements. Um, I think we can raise our hands here in Zoom. So if you have an announcement, please raise your hand and then we'll call on you. Does everyone have that function? Oh, I see uh, Patricia. Can you unmute yourself? Yes. Hi, I just wanted to introduce myself because I came late. Um, I'm with Chinichil Sports Foundation and we do parent programs. And I also wanted to let you know, we have a, a workshop coming up um, for facilitators. I want to put the link in the chat for the flyers if anybody's interested. Thank you, Patricia. Anyone else have an announcement they would like to make? Tom. Um, did I hear someone? Yeah, Tom Cuttenberg. Oh, go ahead, Tom. Hi, thank you. Yeah, this is Tom with Hanover Township. Uh, the township's gonna be offering free tax assistance to to township residents. This will be those in Cook County, Elgin, um, at the township Isaac Walton Center in Elgin, starting February fifth. Our next shred event is March 27th at the campus in Bartlett. If you want to save the date for that. And then uh, we recently uh, came out with uh, online ordering for uh, our residents to order for the food pantry. So if you go to our website at Hanover-Township.org, residents can uh, fill out online orders to receive curbside pickup from the township food pantry. All items we brought out to the car. Uh, we have Spanish speaking volunteers that can help with take orders and deliver orders out to the car. And then for the tax aid, to make an appointment for tax aid, you can call the Senior Center at 630-483-5600. And that's all for Hanover Township. Thank you, Tom. Can you also put your the phone number you just shared on the chat? Yeah, to, to sign up for tax aid, 
through the township to get assistance in filing income taxes, you can call 630-483-5600. And I'll put that in the chat as well. Okay. Um, Elena Gardea mentioned that for people who are people who have education done in other countries, she can assist with showing them how to get an evaluation for their education. So that was Elena Gardea. Uh, Rocio Perez, uh, you mentioned you wanted to make an announcement. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rocio Perez. I'm with the Arc of Illinois. We work with individuals who have intellectual and developmental disabilities. It is a statewide organization. My announcement is that we have an expanded assistive technology consumer stipend program that I wanted to make you aware of. I will put a link in the chat box. So if you know of any individuals who would like to purchase an iPad, a computer for their own personal use, uh, we encourage them to fill out an application for consideration and the application is available in English and in Spanish. Thank you. Thank you, Rocio. And Lorena. Lorena. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to mention really quick that um, our health benefits specialists at Greater Elgin Family Care Center are able to help uh, immigrant seniors who, qual who may qualify for, that, uh, for the new health benefits um, program for immigrant seniors. Um, so they're able to just call our health center and schedule an appointment with them so that they can um, see if they're eligible and then help them submit that application. Um, and again, it's um, our health benefit specialists at any of our locations are able to help. Um, we also have our uh, rapid uh, by next now rapid test available as well. And that is by appointment only and it is available for symptomatic patients only. And uh, they can call and schedule that appointment as well. Thank you. Thank you, Lorena. Any other announcements? Hey, Nancy, are you unmuted? We can hear you. Joaquin Iglesias. Go ahead, Joaquin. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is yeah, Joaquin Iglesias. I'm the Outreach Director here for our Oak Street Health Center in Elgin. I wanted to let everybody know that uh, we have started vaccinating um, our patients and community members 65 and above for the COVID-19. We started Monday. I had sent uh, some flyers announcing this uh, in a link so that people can register. Um, all of our centers for Oak Street Health, we have plenty, uh, have been uh, given uh, lots of access to uh, vaccines by the Illinois Department of Public Health. Um, basically, when you go to this website, and I can share the link uh, on an email blast for everybody uh, who wants to get it. Uh, but once you register through this website, you'll be put on a list, and then you guys will get a call from each, depending on where the person li lives. Uh, to get scheduled to come here to our centers to get vaccinated, you don't need to be a patient. Um, you need to be 65, you just need to prove uh, to show uh, your ID. And um, right now, you know, we have a lot of people who are vaccinated in about 40 to 50 people a day. Um, and there's tons of people that still need to get a call back from us. So we're trying to do the best we can here. But excited to be this, doing this kind of work. And I know a lot of your constituents out there um, want more information about the vaccine and I'm happy to be here at Oak Street Health. Uh, vaccinating community members 65 and above. Thank you. Um, Erika Chavez? Um, no, I have a question for Joaquin. Okay. So Joaquin, um, I have a client and a friend that he lives in Cook County and he's having issues to get the vaccine He's like 70 something and he's diabetic. And he went to Sherman Hospital and Sherman says, no, we cannot give it to you because you live in the Cook County. Is that correct? Is that happening? Yeah, I, I don't know if Joaquin's there still, but uh, Erica uh, Sherman uh, has a patient service area that includes part of uh, Lake McHenry and Kane. It does not extend to Cook. Okay, but exclusively for the vaccine because you know like, He's like, where do I get, where do I go? He's kind of lost because his doctor doesn't know where to get the vaccine. So I think so there is a lot of misunderstanding 
like where they can where can they get the vaccine? So Joaquin, can he go to your location? Yeah, so the vaccines are by appointment only. So Oak Street Health, mm -hmm. this one center in Elgin is one of many. I'm gonna share the link with everybody here that we're using for all of our centers. If you're familiar with Oak Street, uh, we have you know this one center in Elgin, we have a Rockford location, a Waukegan location, and many in the city and across the states as well. If you go to that website that I just shared with everybody, the registration form is going to ask you for a first name, last name, phone number, um, date of birth, because you have to be 65, uh, your email, uh, and mobile phone number. When okay. you put your zip Thank code, you, when, you, when you put your zip code, um, there, then that goes to sort of our corporate level, and then they sort of allocate where the person who's interest, interested uh, is going to get a call from. So if you live in Cook County and you're closer to our Portage Park location, then staff from the Portage Park location is going to call you to okay. schedule your visit uh, at that center to get the vaccine. So actually it goes by counties then. That's what I'm getting. And thank you, Hill, for, ans for answering and, and clarifying that, that yes, it goes by counties. So yep. thank you everyone. Okay. We thank have another you. question. Uh, uh, Myra, I've raised hand, Maida. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, my name is Myra. I'm uh, from the Alzheimer's Association. Um, not a question, just uh, just an announcement. We will have um, well, one. I'm a new member. I came right before COVID um, as a guest, and I just recently joined last week, I think it was. Um, but I just wanted to share with you um, that we will have a one of our education programs in Spanish, uh, healthy living for your brain and body. So we just talk about how to age properly. And we kind of touch a little bit on um, Alzheimer's and dementia. So it's via zoom, I did drop the flyer into the uh, chat. And then another thing that I did want to mention, which I'll, I'll put the flyer in there as well for um, we have a Spanish support group that is meeting via Zoom. So for caregivers uh, dealing with dementia. And so that will also be in Spanish. That is the fourth uh, Sunday of the month. And that meets from uh, two to four. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Maida. Any other announcements? If I could put a plug in for the Coalition for Safe and Healthy Elgin, maybe. <laughs> uh, we're on the precipice of uh, unveiling our first podcast. So uh, everybody be on the lookout for that. We're going to publish it, hopefully, the first one this Friday and once a month after that. So might be tapping some of you for uh, potential guest interviews. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Gil. Uh, Elena? Thank you. Um, I wanted to mention that... Um, for, for now, our ESL and GED classes are full, but we will be, uh, for the next term, they will start in April. So if you know anyone that needs ESL, GED, or citizenship classes, have them um, contact us at elgin.edu forward slash adult ed. And the second thing I want to mention, since someone raised it, we often do get um, persons who have done their education in other countries. And so I'm, please feel free to refer them to me. I'm happy to explain to them the process of getting an evaluation for their education. Thank you, Elena. Thank you. Uh, Elisa? Hi, um, my name is Elisa Lara, and I'm actually from the VNA Health Center. Um, and for those who are not aware of our services, we are a federally qualified health center, and we do provide services for the whole family. We do have grants um, that we do assist people with mammograms in case they're not able to afford them. Um, we actually do some colonoscopies too, um, they're screening ones, um, and if they can't afford that, we pay for those as well. Um, unless if they have any issues with um, trying to obtain them because they have some um, symptoms or something that doesn't qualify, but it's just for screening that's um, qualified. Um, and then also we are actually going to be doing also the COVID vaccine. Right now we're starting with our patients and you know we have to go through what the requirements are. I think they're like, we start with 1B and then they, they'll tell us and we'll be able to go through a system. Um, I know there's a lot of questions right now and I think we're gonna be eventually opening it up to the public as well. But I think it's like, there's a lot of information coming through and we're still trying to get all the information to be able to provide the services. Um, another thing too, um, in terms of um, home health, 
uh, house calls. We actually have a great team that's going out to a lot of people who are not able to obtain, you know, especially the seniors um, that are not able to go out to the, see the providers. We actually have our providers going to the houses. So it's uh, house calls and, and health care that we are trying to focus on a little bit more. So if anybody has any information um, that they need to get to somebody to be seen, um, that's something that we definitely are trying to grow as well. Um, and I put, did put my information in the, um, the site, but I'll put my email because I don't think I did do that. Thank you. Oh, and then also, if anybody has any fundraising ideas for EHN, please send me an email. I would love to hear any ideas that we have. We could um, try to start get, gathering information to start being active in that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Any other questions? Oh, oh wait, that's Lisa. <laughs> Do you see any other hands, Gil? Uh, no, just oh, Lisa. Eddie. <laughs> I see Patty waiting. <laughs> okay. Well, if there are no other announcements. I just want to um, encourage some of you to maybe consider joining our board. We do have the finance chair and marketing chair positions available. We are a fun group of people to work with, and um, it might be a good experience for you. And if you are not interested and you have people who maybe um, would be interested, send them our way. All right, everybody. Well, if there are no more questions or comments, I think we can end a little early. All right, we'll see you next month. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you for joining us. Bye. Adios. Adios. Diana, can you stay on for a second with me? Sure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Adios. Uh, Buen dia. Adios. Can you <laughs> the recording? En español.